Have you ever, ever felt like this when strange things happen when you're putting in footy tips? What is happening, guys? It's your boy Bergs here from The Casual Athlete. A little bit of a different look this week, and I apologize about last week's tips, guys. I was away on business, and my editing software has crapped itself. So if any of you guys know any good editing software out there, I will be very appreciative. Please send it on through or put it down in the comments for me, and I'll check it out. I hope you guys had a good as week as I did last week. We got eight out of eight tips correct. As we can see there, we moved into the 54th spot uh, in the overall rankings on the NRL app, which is probably around about where I've been most of the year. I'm trying to push for that top spot right now, but yeah, it, it's definitely tough uh, up there. 136 tips out of 172. I think giving you guys an idea of how I've been going this year um, really, I guess, puts a bit of legitimacy on myself, but also you can compare yourself to where I've been. And if you've been following my tips for the majority of the season, you should be up there in most of your comps this season. So I know I am going quite well in a few of my other tipping comps as well. So we are looking to snatch those prizes up as quick as possible. And having a weekend this week that we had in round 24, I know there's a lot of tipping apps out there where you can put your joker on. So it was a definitely a good week to do that getting eight out of eight and all the favorites won, which does often not happen. I was waiting for an upset to happen this week and, you know, thought I might just cop it on the chin, but we also got those extra two points that you get for tipping the full round as well. Um, so with that being said, guys, I want to take you through uh, the tips that we are going to be looking at in round 25. And if you like the content that we put out here on The Casual Athlete, please go follow us. The link is in the description for TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. We are active on all of those, and we are always looking for people to share their comments, you know, let us know how you are going in your tipping comps, in your fantasy comps. We do a lot of that here on the channel and love the support. Thank you so much. Make sure that you like and subscribe as well. We are getting up there in subscriber numbers. Big things coming in 2024 as well, so stay tuned for that news. Now, getting into the first tips this week, we have my North Queensland Cowboys returning from the bye against the Sharks. And this game's up in North Queensland. However, it doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. Um, looking at the form guide, the Cowboys have actually lost nine out of the last 10 games against the Sharks. And you'd say that the Sharks have picked up a little bit since they uh, were on a bit of a downhill slide. They don't get too many players back for this game, though. I think Hazelton may come back into the team after his head knock against Burgess. But, yeah, for the Cowboys as well, we don't really get anyone of note back. I think James Tarmo might be available, but I'm pretty sure his days are numbered as a uh, player in the NRL. Although I love James Tarmo, I've got a very soft spot for him and I was glad that we signed him up so that he could finish his career back at the Cowboys where it all started. So um, I'm going to go with my team this week, guys. As you can see, they're going to lock that one in. They are the Adolf. 50 favorites at the moment, dollar fifty-five favorites. I think that may change over the course of the week. The Sharks you know, can be pretty strong. Their edges are phenomenal. And, you know, when they get a roll on, they can really put some points on teams. And earlier this year, we saw that as Cowboys fans, they put 40 on us and we only managed to score one try in return. So we'll see how that goes. As for the margin, I'm going to go the Cowboys one to 12. Uh, I don't see it being any more than that. I, I'm only tipping the Cowboys because I think we need a win uh, to stay in contention for that top eight. With the Knights getting a very easy win, it pushes us back out of the top eight. We were in it prior to the Knights winning on Sunday. So, yeah, hopefully we can get a bit more of a a bit more of a stranglehold on this top eight race as it's becoming a bit of a contentious issue at the moment. Um, and yeah, I think the Cowboys need uh, a victory here. So I'm going to back my boys and hopefully they get over the line. 
Next game up, we have the Warriors taking on the Manly Seagulls. And i got to tell you, not a great matchup for the Warriors. They've only won four out of the last ten against the Seagulls. However, they are playing this game at home. Should get Clans Chan's nickel clock stat back, which is uh, welcomed in. I think Torpiki did pretty well last week. I'm waiting for the Tigers to get a win, and we'll talk about them a little bit later in this video. But, yeah, I just think that the Warriors did what they needed to do in that game. They got in of Waikato, got into Waikato, got out of Waikato with the two points and, you know, are still going to be a top four team this year. Very interested to see how they may match up against either the Broncos or Penrith, depending on who comes second, because I think they're a lock for third right now. Um and what's really great about that is they will get a second chance and they will get to go home to New Zealand and play a semi-final in New Zealand. And that will be uh, a great occasion. And hopefully uh, all the WAS supporters get up for that. Uh, we love our WAS here on the casual athlete. It's brilliant. Manly. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit down on Manly. I, I know the team was talking about what they needed to do to make the top eight, and they employed some very interesting tactics against Penrith this week. I tell you, the the old kicking jewels of the 1970s and 80s were back, and um, it didn't work out too well for Ruben Garrick on one particular play. I think it, it's been replayed so many times, uh, either on Instagram or uh, on Facebook over the weekend. I've seen so many reels of uh, Ruben Garrick's kick to uh, Dylan Edwards that led to a to Ruva try. But, um, yeah, got to, got to go with the favourites here, the Warriors. I think uh, their forward pack is still one of the best in the comp. Tohu Harris and uh, Adam Fanua Blake have been outstanding this year. You'd probably have um, Pat Carrigan and Payne Haas just ahead of them in terms of the forward one-two punch um, in the league. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lock in that Warriors tip there. Um, I think they get it done 1-12. to 12. I'm I'm concerned a little bit about Manly's outside backs, particularly their right edge. Their right edge is outstanding. Ola Kawatu and Saab and Kula have just got so much speed, so much agility um, that can really trouble guys like Pompey and uh, Marcelo Montoya on that wing. So um, we will see how they match up, but I expect the Warriors to get a win here. I know these have been two pretty contentious tips so far, and you want to get these ones right towards the end of the season, they could make or break your win in your tipping comp. So hopefully the Warriors get a win there. Now, moving on to a very interesting game that I'm very keen to talk about this week. We have Parramatta taking on the Roosters. And with Mitchell Moses going down, probably the biggest news story of the week, it puts Parramatta in a life or death scenario right now. Not that they weren't in it already, but... I just think that um, Moses being out for pretty much the rest of the season uh, tells you all you need to know about where the Parramatta Reels have faltered this year. I think it goes back to their start of the year. Um, it just wasn't good enough, and they were always playing catch-up from that point. You'd probably say the Roosters are in a very similar spot. They had a shocking start to the year and have only really hit their straps in the last couple of games. Um, still not convincing, really. Uh, I didn't really think that they blew the Dolphins off the park. It was good to see Kiri play his 200th game, but um, I just think that the Roosters aren't the best football side, but they can do enough to beat Para. And it's shown in the last 10 games between these two teams, Para have only won three out of those last 10 games. So it's, again, not a good matchup for the Eels. And I could have seen uh, a world where the Eels surprise us again, like they did against the Rabbitohs this year. and and beat the Broncos, but they got absolutely torched. And yeah, Brad Arthur was probably not happy at the end of that game. It was a good game for Dylan Brown though, to get his um, confidence back and, and get um, a bit more, let's say miles into the legs after being out for so many weeks. So yeah, him coming back and having a good game will put a bit of confidence into him, but do I think it'll be enough to beat the Roosters who are going all right at the moment? Probably not. So I'm sorry, Eels fans. I'm going to go against you this week. I mean, surprise, surprise. But I think if you're betting on this game, the Roosters are a good take. Um, they're pretty much, I'd say, one of the locks this week um, at $1.65. You could make some pretty good money on that. Um, I know Eels fans won't be happy to hear that. And um, Longy, my mate here, won't be happy to hear that either. So, yeah. Um, 
We're going to go the Roosters there, and I reckon they get it done 1-12. to 12. I know I've gone 1-12 to 12 for all three games, but these, these ones are going to be close, guys. Trust me. Okay, moving on to the Tigers versus the Dolphins this week. Um, as I said before, I keep waiting for the Tigers to get this win, to get a you know kind of semblance on where they're going to finish their 2023 season. Um, they don't really have anyone waiting in the wings in terms of casualty ward. I mean, Adam Dewey's sitting there, but he's not going to be back till the end of the season, um, next season, sorry. And, yeah, with the Dolphins, their season's kind of faltered a little bit and, you know, let it get away from them, them last week. Um, I think that the Tigers, though, I know they're outsiders in this game, but I, I'm so tempted to tip the Tigers. It's um, it's definitely been a talking point for me the last couple of weeks. I thought they'd actually beat the Raiders. Uh, I know I tipped the Raiders uh, in round 23, but the Tigers were right there with them and because I don't believe in the Raiders. I don't want to say I didn't believe in the Warriors either, but I think um, the Tigers could have easily you know, turn that game around a little bit. And they showed a bit of promise for long periods in that game and and could have um, given the Warriors a bit of a shock. This, however, I think is the team that are down, you know, chips are down. Um, it's going to be about competing between these two teams. Who's going to compete more? And I feel like the Dolphins have a lot of those players. They don't really have a genuine superstar to turn to to make plays, but so the Tigers. And it's about desire right now. And I think... Um, the Tigers' spine looks a lot better on paper than the Dolphins' spine right now, especially when you take Hamaso Tabuifido out of the spine and you stick him at centre. And I just think they've only done that to shore up an edge and it's not really giving them any potency uh, in attack. He was covering up so many plays down the middle uh, during the season and now that's not happening uh, because he's been forced to move out to centre. And um, I think that... The Dolphins need to move him back to fullback. I know there's probably not some great options. You and Aitken might be back this week, so you could probably plug him into the centres and run with Valens Tavare and you and Aitken, see how that goes. Probably not the best defensive pairing of centres in the comp, but it's you're playing the Tigers. You may as well throw the ball around, have a bit of fun. You know, both teams aren't going to make the finals, so I expect it to be a pretty attacking game, and I would definitely be on the overs for this game as well. So... I'm going to lock in the Tigers there. I think that they will get um, their fourth win of the season. Um, been a long season for Tigers fans, and uh, I was not high on them during the start of the season, and you can see that in our Tigers preview. If you want to go back, make sure that you subscribe to the Casual Athlete as well. Just had to get that one in there. Um, and, yeah, I think the Tigers get this one done 1-12. to 12. Um, I know... The Dolphins probably have a few clutch players in terms of like Jermaine Asako has been outstanding this year and um, Hamaso has just been off this planet as I spoke about before. But um, Tiger's most influential player at the moment is Luke Brooks and um, he is a player that they're letting go, surprisingly. So, yeah, I think he'll want to put in a good performance in a win that could possibly be be his last win as a Tigers player. So going to lock in the Tigers there, 1-12. to 12. Um, Moving down to the Titans versus the Panthers. Not a good matchup for the Titans. They've won 10 out of the last – they've sorry, they've won three out of the last 10 games between these two teams. Um, they don't often play each other twice in a season as well, which I found very interesting. But Panthers, yeah, they're just red hot. There at the moment, um, I find it very interesting that the NRL has put this as the margin game for the week. I lost a bit of points out on the margin last week uh, with that Knights game. So um, hopefully, I thought the dogs would make it a little bit close. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, hopefully, this one's a bit easier to tip. I know the Titans have gotten some players back and are showing uh, glimpses of fight, but it's pretty simple. Um, I just got to give um, credit to the Panthers um, at this stage of the year. I um, expected a bit of a slide with Coruscant, Kikau leaving, you know, Burton a bit more of a residual one, but still going to be missed. He's a, he was a very good player for them, but they have just excelled beyond my expectations. They've become the new storm. Uh, I think you can remember back to a time where the storm just had 
the best spine in the NRL and it was unstoppable each and every week. Uh, Penrith right now are that team. I just don't know who's going to topple them. Broncos look very good. Um, they have the bye this week, but yeah, I would say the Broncos right now look like the only team that can take it to the Panthers and they've just got strike all over the park. And, and that's something that not every team in the comp has, unfortunately. So yeah, uh, as much as it pains me to do so, I'm going to go the Panthers and I'm going to lock in the Panthers by 26. I think that they get this one done pretty comfortably. Um, I know they struggled a little bit against Manly last week, but they're in cruise control for most of that second half. And it didn't really seem in doubt to me. I know Manly, once again, watching that game, I expected them to drop off a little bit and they did. So uh, the Panthers got that win, 1-12, to and we move on to the next week. So, yeah, 26 the margin there, and I'm going to go with the Penrith Panthers. Pretty easy one for me. Moving on to Wollongong, where we have the Dragons taking on the Storm on Saturday night. And the Dragons, look, they have not been the worst team at the moment. They're, they're playing some pretty decent football. Um, I think they were unlucky against Parramatta. Uh, I think they were, again, pretty good against the Rabbitohs. I think the Rabbitohs need to take a, a big, hard look at themselves right now and figure out if they want to challenge for a championship because right now, based on the performance that I saw from them against the Dragons, there was an awful game for the last 30 minutes. No team could really hold the ball. And you look at guys like Cody and Luttrell and Cook. I know Luttrell had a good game, but, again, it didn't really translate to a dominant performance and something that you expect from the Rabbitohs at this stage of the year. So he's not exactly having the best impact that he had last year going into the finals, which worries me a little bit. Um, on the Storm side of things, they were always winning that game against the Raiders. I know the Raiders, um, I didn't get to speak about it in our last week's video, but the Raiders had actually won five in a row. Um, probably was heavily covered by Fox Sports. Um, they won five in a row at Amy Park before that performance, and then they didn't score a try. First time that the Raiders have not scored a try in a game for, I think it was 3,298 days or something like that. So, yeah, the Storm pretty dominant, um, as expected. And I'm hearing word that Ryan Pappenhausen could be in the starting team or on the bench this week for the Melbourne Storm. So stay tuned for that announcement. We're going to go to the Storm here, guys. Not too much to think about there. Storm 13+. Plus. And now we're on to Sunday's games where the Knights are taking on the Rabbitohs. Now, this has become a potentially uh, juicy matchup, as you might say. The Knights dominant again against the Dogs. I know they're playing the Dogs, and they get to play the Dogs twice in the space of six weeks and they put a hundred plus points on them, but not really a true reflection of where the Knights are sitting at the moment. Um, Caelan Ponga again, had a strong game without being particularly exciting in a team that, you know, scored 42 points. Uh, I think it was maybe a lack of defensive effort for the dogs as to why they let in so many points. There was just no effort on some of those tries. And you can see that um, some of the tries that the Knights scored we're not first grade quality. So yeah, I think they beat up on, you know, the little kid in class uh, <laughs> at the moment with the dogs, but credit to the Knights. They are in the top eight right now, but they've got a couple of tough fixtures to finish the season here. Um, Rabbitohs being one of them. <sighs> I've just got to go with the Rabbitohs right now. I just think they have too much class for the Knights. And if the Rabbitohs lose this game, then they are staring down the barrel of a potential showdown with the Roosters. And how juicy would that be in the last round of the regular season to have the Rabbitohs and Roosters go at it for a spot in the finals? I know my team are in contention as well, but I would love to see that matchup and see the fire that would be built up for that matchup as well. Um, again, yeah, I think the Rabbitohs are just one of those teams where you can't count them out especially after a weekend where they haven't exactly been their best. Um, I know they got the two points, but they can't rest on that. So this week, I expect a better performance from the Rabbitohs. 
Moving to our last game of the season, uh, moving on to our last game of the round, guys, we have the Rabbitohs taking on the Bulldogs. And as I said about the Raiders, it was the first time that they didn't score a try in a game since uh, 2017. So that was nearly six years ago. And the Dogs got absolutely hammered by a team that hammered them six weeks ago. So both teams coming off a loss here. Uh, I don't particularly think that the dogs can overcome the Raiders here. I think the Raiders are being fed another easy matchup, which is, I guess, good for the Raiders. I mean, they get to maintain their spot in the top six, which is what will happen in this game. Um, Let's just go ahead and lock the Raiders in there. Um, I can't tip the dogs right now. Uh, They're just lacking in effort in all areas. Um, They don't know uh, who is going to come in and make that team better. Um, the signings that they made are really weird. Uh, I don't think Blake Taff moves the needle. I don't think Jamin Salmon really moves the needle. And Crichton's played his entire career at Penrith. Not, I'm going to take that away from him, but I think he may find that moving away from Penrith may be a bit of a silly decision. Um, but we'll have to wait till 2024 for that. Uh, the Raiders, they'll get this one done 13 plus. Um They'll want to bounce back after an embarrassing performance uh, against Melbourne Storm, and that's not me calling it embarrassing. You can uh, go to Ricky Stewart's press conference for the uh, call of that being embarrassing. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for you guys. Um, Raiders thirteen plus, and hopefully we get another eight out. Of eight. Hopefully we get another eight out of eight this week, guys. So anyway, that is my tips for round 24. I know we had a bit of a different format this week, guys. But as I said, if you want to help me out with my editing software, make sure that you leave a link in the comments below. I like to read all the comments each and every week. If you like the video, please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. We put out videos each and every week. And I'll catch you on the next one.